football games in state history with Lacey defeating Woodrow Wilson on Carl Taracone's field goal as time expired in the ball game to win that South Jersey Group 3 state championship. And of course, the excitement here at Lacey is still high because Keith Elias, the number two uh, scorer in the state of New Jersey, is back for his senior year of football under Lou Versillo. Tom's over north. On the other hand, coming off a losing season, there's been a lot of losing seasons up in Mariner land, and they're trying to get their program on solid footing. They've changed coaches an awful lot. They have a new coach this year, Bob Nanny, but he's been at Tom's over north for many years. He's coached a lot of sports there, as well as football as an assistant, so it's not like they're, they're changing everything entirely new. And George Jack's going to come in. He's back with us again this year, and he's going to talk a little bit about the Mariners, and of course, George, having been a head coach at Tom's over east, is pretty familiar with the Toms River schools. George, welcome back. Thank you, Ken. It's a pleasure. Um, Toms River North, I think, is on the rise. Um, Bob Nanny, if Bob Nanny works his team as hard as he works himself personally, as far as conditioning and running and, and uh, lifting, um, his boys are going to be in great physical condition. And he's got a nice coaching staff that he's put together on short notice, uh, very enthusiastic and, and uh, football-wise. John Hunty has got to be one of the best offensive coaches that I've ever seen, and I'm glad to see him back in the game. Mike Jump as offensive coach is terrific with the kids, and, and the whole coaching staff is doing a nice job. They were four and five last year, their JV team. Uh, they're very big. Physically, they have over 20 boys on their roster, over 200 pounds, and they're going to come right at Lacey today with, with uh, like a bowling ball against bowling pins, they think. Uh, defensively, they're a little weak in the secondary, and that could pose a problem to them. So I think the wind is going to help North, and it's going to hurt Lacey, but I'll let uh, Bob talk about that. Uh, Carney, Apostolakis, Sasso, Wigilinski on the right side, the strong side of their line, big and tough, and I think they're going to utilize them and control the football. George, last year a player that impressed us an awful lot, he was on the Channel 8 All-Star team, was Joe Clarino. He lines up as the tailback. North, you mentioned, is big, and I'm sure they're going to try to pound that ball down Lacey's throat with that tailback rushing attack in the eye formation. What about Clarino? Now, I heard maybe he may have a little bit of an injury problem. Well, he looked fine to me warming up. Joe had a problem last year with his shoulder a little bit, and maybe it's a little bit of a recurrence, but uh, I'm sure he's ready to go. He's a tough kid. I knew him when he was 12 years old at our football camp at Farragut. And uh, he loves the game of football, and he's probably one of the leaders, Ian Brown, for this North football team. Clarino wears number 44, so you want to keep an eye on him. He goes both ways. We had him on the All-Star team as a linebacker last year, but he's a good running back. Bob Strangi, of course, coached some undefeated teams up at Red Bank Regional High School. We were talking about that Lacey game last year. You were involved in the game. Everybody considered uh, for many, many years the greatest game in playoff history when your Red Bank Bucks beat Heightstown. 46-44, back and forth game. Last year we saw a game similar to it right here at Lacey. And what was your opinion on that game? Well, I think yesterday, or last year's game, it seems like only yesterday, uh, was probably the greatest game I ever had the privilege to witness other than the one I participated in. And I was so happy to see my good friend Lou Vercillo pull it out at the wire like that. And uh, George and I were prognosticators last year in that we, we kind of guessed it dead on. We kind of predicted it would be a last minute. And I think one of us, I don't remember who, but one of us said it would be a Tarakone field goal in the closing seconds. I think it was George. But it was an exciting game. And it's the kind of game that makes sure football great. Those kids never quit from Lacey. It was just a, just a tremendous football game. Now, Lou Brasil, the Lacey coach, coached under you on the Red Bank staff. Uh, he's liked to run the football. He's had uh, some good runners over the years, Elias being the best. He's back. But uh, I've been reading some articles, and uh, maybe he's going to open things up. And he's got a veteran quarterback all in his junior year, and that's uh, Garrett Gardy. Well, Kenny, you know, from last year's ball club, they lost 14 seniors. So they had to change this strategy going into this game. And Gardy, even though he's a young quarterback, is a coach's son. He thinks like a coach. He's an excellent passer. He, he doesn't throw the interception. He knows when to throw the ball away. He's a fairly mobile kind of kid, and he's a good, effective, medium to short-range passer. Lacey figures by throwing those kinds of passes, they can take the pressure off Elias because Elias is no secret. Everybody in the shore is going to gear to stop that kid. Now, I understand Lou's going to keep maybe two of his better linemen and try to platoon them today. If he has to, he'll bring him in on defense. I'm talking about uh, Hebrew, Scott Hebrew, and a kid named Megan. They're two of his veteran linemen. They've been playing for a couple of years. But that's his plan today. He hopes to be able to do that. Yes, uh, he wants to do that because he feels if they're going to have a great year, he's got to bring the young kids along. So by two platooning, you can get more kids in the game, build more 
uh, game experience, and uh, he wants to play a lot of bodies. He went through the, used the same philosophy through all four of his preseason scrimmages. All right, let's get George in here for a prediction on today's ball game before we wrap it up. Weather conditions, we thought we were going to have the day off today, folks, because we thought uh, Hurricane Hugo was going to be giving us a lot of rain today. Uh, what happened is we had a beautiful morning. It's clouded up as we've gotten near game time. We're hoping that it's not rain clouds and it's going to hold off. The prediction is uh, rain showers starting late today. Right now, we do have a very strong wind, and that could be a very big factor in today's football game. George, who do you like? Well, uh, Keith Elias is a great back, and Garrett Gardy is a nice quarterback. Uh, they tasted the state championship last year. North is very hungry. Uh, they're an A school. Uh, they're big and they're huge, and I'm going to take North. Uh, even though the newspapers pick Lacey, every one of them, I'm going to stick my neck out and take Tom's River North, and I'll say 10-7. All right, Bob. Uh, I disagree with George. I think Elias and uh, Garrett are two of the uh, outstanding kids in the shore. And I think they're going to come up with the big play. This may be one of those games where North dominates, but Lacey wins. Uh, look for the wind to play an important factor. It's been picking up steadily since game time. Lacey about 21-14. I was going to go 20-14, Lacey, so I'll break the tie. Bob and I are going to go with the home team, the Lions, today. Lacey, I think, has everything to gain, nothing to lose. They're the B Division school. It certainly would make them look better playoff time if they can beat an A-division team like Tom's River North. We'll be back with a kickoff of today's Game of the Week on Channel 8 in just one moment. Now job with an engineering firm in New York. I got a better offer. I'm building schools overseas with the Peace Corps. The pace is a little slower than New York, but here I'm getting grassroots experience I couldn't get anywhere else. The way I look at it, the world can wait two years for another 40-story smoked glass high-rise. Peace Corps, the toughest job you'll ever love. It's a helpless feeling for a parent because you can't always be with him to keep him safe. But you can teach him how to be safe. And those words will stay with him, even when you can't. We can help you talk about AIDS. Call for a guide. Winning depends on team support. As a Philly, I'm committed to making my team a winner. The staff at Deborah Heart and Lung Center depend on the same level of commitment from volunteers and contributors. Deborah continues to be among the region's top centers for open heart surgery and cardiac catheterization. Expert care is provided to all patients, regardless of their ability to pay. Support Deborah Heart and Lung Center because winning the fight against heart and lung disease depends on you. We are ready to go with today's football game. I'm Ken Turp. With me, Bob Strange and George Jack. The captains are at the center of the field, and right now the weather has really gotten ugly since we did the pregame show. Uh, the wind is getting very, very strong. Nothing will stay put in the press box. The windows are open here at Lacey, and I can't even have my lineup board stand up. That's pretty heavy. It's starting to rain already, Ken. It's just a dramatic change in just about 10 minutes. And if the, uh, the flagpole, you can see the flag is blown straight out. And uh, the wind must be 25, 30 miles an hour already. Game captains today. Actually, Lou's going to go with his veterans from last year. He's got about seven kids back. And they're going to be captains all season. That's Hebrews 73 out there, the, t the uh, guard for Lacey, along with number 22, Mike Fallen. And Clarina, we mentioned, number 44, for Tom's River North is one of the captains today for the Mariners. Looking at the starting lineup in the, um, well, before we do that, Bob, did you get the name of the officials? There was some confusion as to whether the official knew his fellow workers today. 
All right, Ken, the referee for today's game is Len Brown. The umpire is Ralph Fuentes. Field judge is Paul Burke. And working the clock is Mike Tortor Torello. Lacey's going to receive. They're going to go left to right on your, on your picture. And dropping deep for Lacey, Keith Elias, number 20 to the far side. Mike Tholen to the near side, number 22. Toms River North, under their new coach, Bob Nanny. The first game for Nanny as a head coach. He's been an assistant at Toms River for many years. And uh, kicking off will be um, Damian Bodziak doing the honors this year for the Mariners. He wears uniform number 43. And we're waiting for the signal from the official. Bob Nanny coming on the field right now to talk to one of the officials. He's pointing over to the Lacey sideline. Apparently he wants the football that the uh, young boy has there on the sideline. And the official's going to come over and get that football to start the game with. Bob, I wonder if uh, the coin toss, uh, who won the coin toss? I wasn't paying attention. I wonder if someone took the wind or, or took the opportunity to uh, kick off instead of receive. Uh, I didn't see either, George, because just at that time, the wind blew in here and blew everything away. However, Lacey's going to have his hands cut out for it. They're going to have to move the ball into the wind against a very big, tough, physical Tom's River North line. And if they don't move the ball, they're going to have to kick into that wind. And I look for that punt to go nowhere. They don't have Carl Terracone this year. I just checked with Chip Peterson, former coach here at Lacey. Lacey won the toss, but elected to defer until the second half. So apparently North chose the win. OK, Ken, that's the answer. While we're waiting for the signal to get the 1989 high school football season underway, Lacey defending state champion South Jersey Group 3, looking for another banner year under Lou Bersillo, who's done a great job. The only coach Lacey's ever had here in Lanoka Harbor. And the Mariners with a size today, and they're hoping it's going to rain, slow down Elias and company. It goes to Keith Elias on the eight-yard line. Keith's coming up, cuts it to the right. He's still on his feet, still on his feet, and still going strong. Flag on the play. Uh, here goes Elias. Keith Elias is going to break it. Did he go out of bounds, George? No, he's oh, not yeah. out of bounds. There is a flag. There's a flag. There is a flag, there is a flag but I think the flag is going to be a face mask. Flag way back on the 22-yard line. This may bring it back. Let's wait and see. Brilliant run Can by I last year's second-team All-State running back, Keith Elias. It is against Lacey. Ken, that ball was taken by Elias on a three-yard line, and you can see why last year he gained 1,442 yards. Just sensational run back by him. It's a shame the clip had no effect on a play and it nullifies a touchdown in the early going. If we have a problem on your picture, folks, it's due to some technical problems with the electrical system here at Lacey Press Box. We are having a little problem with our PA system running into our uh, telecast video, and we hope it will not be a distraction to you. They're going to try to keep the PA down as much as possible, allow us to work here. Lacey backing up as they go in their huddle. Let's set the backfield. Garrett Gardy, the son of the athletic director here at Lacey. John Gardy is the quarterback. He's a junior. He started all last year. Dave Cottrell, the sophomore, will start at fullback. Keith Elias will be the tailback. Mike Tholen will be a flanker. The split end will be Jason Benichuk. And we're going to see actually four receivers alternating. Ed Watcha and uh, Charlie Schoenberg also see action at flanker and split end. Two tight ends. Elias gets the call, and Elias, nice run. Beautiful run on the first play from scrimmage. He picked up about seven, Ken, on just a straight power play. Tackle made by defensive corner Jim Hempen. He had a brother, George John Hempen, a great football and wrestling star at North Now at West Point. Scott Hebrew, uh, nice job up front, nice down block. Keith Bullets is the new center this year. He's a sophomore for Lacey. The guard, Scott Hebrew, three-year veteran. Mike Peterson at the left guard. Again, Elias. This time, not much running room. Fired up Mariner defense here to start this ballgame. They're out 
probably keying on Elias on just about every play. The Lions tried to run a little counter that time, but they still gave the ball to Keith, and that's uh, who the Mariners, I'm sure, are looking for. What happened, actually, the first blocker was tripped by his own man and went down, so they only had one blocker at the point of attack. Third and three for Lacey. The tackles for Lacey, Chris Campo, a sophomore, Dave Egan, veteran senior. The tight end, Ron Laird, he was a great linebacker last year for the Lions. He'll play linebacker today. That's the offensive unit for the Lions. Pitch to Elias, going wide. Drop the ball. Fumble. Mariners have it. Mariners on it. So they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Big break early in the ball game. And number 66 on the football, defensive tackle Mike Strauss. Elias never seemed to have control of that little quick pitch. Well, the pitch was kind of high, Bob, and I think by the time he got control of the ball, it was too late to put it away. He was on the way down. Let me set the offense for the Mariners. Mike Carney will be the center. Robert Pearson and John Apostolakis will be the guards. Jeff Bell and Ed Sasser, the tackles. Chet Wigelinski, a tight end. Rolando Acosta, the split end. T.J. Tucker, the flanker, the quarterback. Doug Dawkins, a familiar name. We'll talk about that in a minute. Brian Armbruster, Joe Clarino, the running back. Split backfield, Mariners. Clarino. And there's the power of Joe Clarino. Touchdown, Mariners. 20-yard run by Joe Clarino to start the ball game. First play from scrimmage. Straight ahead dive, Ken. Nothing fancy. Joe Clarino, a Channel 8 All-Star last year as a linebacker, showing his offensive ability as he takes it in as the Mariners set up in a split backfield and he was lined up as a left halfback. Here's the extra point attempt by Damon Bodziak, the man who, now it's going to be number, looks like 36, guys. And that's Pat Clark. Flag on the kick. Kick is no good. We have a penalty. 38, it Ken. Like it's, not 38. The it's not on the roster, Ken. At least well, I maybe Bodziak there, changed so. his number. I wasn't reading his number when he kicked off. We had Damon Bozziak down for number 43, 43 and I was told yeah. he would be the kicker today. Fellas, move back behind that thing. I don't want to say too much, huh? They're going to do it over again. It's against Lacey. So the time of that score came 9.41 of the first quarter. North capitalizing on the fumble recovery by Keith Elias. The holder is Doug Dawkins, the quarterback. And it's good. And the snap man is Mike Carney. So Mike Carney moves uh, um, the center, also does the long snaps for Toms River North. Seven to nothing Mariners here in our opening game of the year. We've got another good one coming up next week, Bob. We got history in the making. We'll be down at Southern Regional for the first night game ever for the Rams at home against Central Regional. Both teams opening up impressively last night. Yeah, Central Regional beating Manalapan, who was picked to be the number two team in the shore, and Southern looking very impressive in their win over Monsignor Donovan. Uh, it should be a great ball game. Georgia Mariners got a break early in the game, and this uh, is a hell of a way to start the season for them. Last year, they weren't able to capitalize on these kind of breaks. Here they get a turnover on a 14-yard line. First play, boom, simple dive play, nothing fancy, found the hole, touchdown. Well, Bobby, I think they got two breaks. <laughs> they got a break when the kickoff return was called back also. We, uh, you know, scores last night, Central shut out Manila from 20 to nothing, and it was Southern beating Monsignor Donovan 30 to 6. Big victory at Central Regional. They're really celebrating over there. Well, we're going to call it Damian Bodziak until we're told otherwise, although he's not wearing the uniform number he's supposed to be wearing. We go through this almost every game with numbers being changed from the roster. They go with a short kick, and it's covered by Lacey. And Lacey will get excellent field position. On the football for the Lions was Jason Torrey, number 34. Ken, I think the North coaches said, we don't want the ball kicked to Keith Elias again. Let's lay it flat and see if we can just get it down the field, but it didn't go that far. Well, Michigan didn't learn her lesson last week. They kicked it to the Rocket twice, and he right. did it to him twice. That's right. So uh, Bob Nanny says, I'm not that stupid, so I'll just keep it away from him. We want to worry about Mr. Elias, at least on the returns. But they're going to have to worry 
about them from uh, the line of scrimmage as Lacey puts the ball in play at their own 46-yard line. Three receivers to the top of your screen. Garrett Gardy, the veteran quarterback, he's just a junior, hands off to Elias. On the tackle for Times of North was Joey Clarino, 44. Clarino, and also in there was number 76, Jim Diedelmeyer, the right tackle. Let me set that defense. Ed Sasso and Steve Kurz are the ends. Mike Strauss and Jim Diedemeyer, the tackles in a 4-4. The linebackers, Brian Rayhill, Joe Clarino, TJ Tucker, and Brad Auer, the defensive secondary, Jim Hempen, Bob Brown, and the safety, Andy Hyman. Hyman is the backup quarterback. Second down, a fake to Elias. Guardy on the run, throws, Got him. complete to Laird, the tight end, number 47, Ron Laird. First down, Lions. Ron Laird, we mentioned he was one of those, they had two great linebackers on that state championship team last year. Laird was one, and the other one graduated. Anybody remember the name of the one that graduated, guys? He was on our all-star team. Chris was Rule? For Rule. And Laird will be the, the leader back there on the defense, and there he is catching a ball at tight end. Lacey in Mariner territory. Guardy throw blocked. Let's, I don't know which one got his hand. I'm going to have to give it to the big guy, I think. Blocked by Sasso, the defensive end. George, an awful lot of pressure by the veteran Mariner line right up the middle. Some of the... Uh, Coach Russo was very uh, worried about some sophomores and some young people yet playing in that interior line being able to hold their own out there I, today. I think it was a screen type of a play, and then and the offensive linemen didn't stay with their block just long enough. They let them come right through, and you can't do that on the screen. All right, 36-yard line of the Mariners. Here comes Lacey, second down. Second and 10. Elias cutting outside. Elias going for the corner. He turns the corner. And finally dragged out of bounds by Andy Hyman, a safety man. Another first down for the Lions. <laughs> 21-yard lines where they'll mark it, and there you see the explosiveness of Keith Elias. I think the uh, Mariners are vulnerable outside because they don't have that kind of speed, so anytime Lacey gets out there, you're going to see a nice game. Twin wideouts going to the far side for Lacey. They've got Schoenberg out there, who's alternating at that wide receiver spot. Garrett throws that way. Completion, and not much room to run once he caught it. The pass to Benichuk, the split end. Jason Benichuk, nice catch. A little square out pattern by the inside receiver for a gain of only about one yard, though. Correction on his name, it's Benichuk. Not Benichuk, I said Chuck. He spells a little differently, but uh, it's Benichuk. That was a tough throw for uh, Gardy, you know, rolling to his left, throwing across his body. Well, he only, he didn't get that much yardage out of it. It'll bring up second, and we'll call it nine for Lacey. Elias again cuts it back outside, and he stays on his feet, drags a big tack on his back. And he's down near the 15-yard line, just short of the 15. Ed Sasso, we've called his name a couple times already on the stop. The wind is just uh, swirling through this press box, and it's hard for us to keep our rosters in front of us and our notes. Ken Ed Sasso was uh, an All-A South player last year as a junior. Lacey splitting the receiver wide all the time. A post pattern could be open. Garrett throws. Far side dropped. Intended for Brian Coffey, who lined up at fullback, number 36. You're going to see um, other backs today for Lacey that didn't start the ball game. Uh, Coffey's one of them. Uh, Jason Torrey may see some action on offense. And Dennis Cameron, a junior running back. Number 24, so watch for them today. Now, last year, Taracone would have lined up for a field goal, but with this win and without Taracone, brings up a fourth and six. All right, ball on the 22-yard line. Straight back, Gordy, throwing to the near side. Short, incomplete. 
So the Mariners will take over on downs on the 22-yard line. I didn't see Keith Elias on the field that last play. I don't believe he was out there. Oh, they split about four or five substitutions in. All right, here come the Mariners. They lead 7-0 here. We're at Lacey Township High School in Anoka Harbor on an overcast, windy day here. Warm day, but very, very windy. Dawkins. He's got a blocker there that goes outside. Number 19, I believe, uh, guys on the reception, Andy Hyman. Dangerous kind of a play. I, uh, I mean, executed, but dangerous. Yeah, a little one-man type pro screen, but the receiver and a blocking lineman was very close together on that. Guys, if that was number 19, who's Hyman on the reception, he could throw the ball because he's listed as the backup quarterback. So when he takes that sideline pass there, he's liable to just Double chuck it downfield. It's a lateral. So he may watch for that later on. He may be setting Lacey up. Good point, Ken. Gain of two, second and eight. Doug Dawkins is a senior. He's new this year as the quarterback. There's a flag. We had a, Delay a game. Uh, pretty good running quarterback for the Mariners for a couple of years. Was it DJ Dawkins? It's his brother, I Brother, believe. right. And another interesting uh, point, Ken, one of the coaches at North now is Bob Mangold, who played for Bob Fiacco on that championship team at North. Bob Mangold was the one who scored the conversion, wasn't he? The two-point conversion to beat Brick in the yeah. uh, Giants Stadium. In fact, I was sitting in the corner of the end zone when Bob Mangold went with, with, the, uh, with the pitch. That was 1979. Yep. And the Mariners state champions under Fiacco in their one winning era. They've had a lot of losing seasons lately. Oh, they try to power it off the right side. Lots of bl uh, dark blue shirts there for Lacey. That was Clarino behind the lead back, Ken, trying to find that hole he found uh, before, but Lacey stopped him for a loss on a play. Front five for Lacey, Mike Potichar and Ed Wachka are the ends, Dwayne Gudzak and Rob Jacobson, the tackles, and Mike Stefanelli is the nose guard. The linebackers, we mentioned Laird, the tight end, veteran linebacker on the weak side, Mike Peterson, a strong side, Mike Kilmurray and Rob Smith, Dennis Cameron and Mike Tholen in the secondary. Bob, I ask you about his uh, lose terminology. Maybe you can explain it. We get a chance here on defense. I go to the big guy, Paul Rich. They had an experiment this year, guys, and there you saw heavyweight wrestling uh, standout. Paul Rich won the districts last year for North, and they're trying the big guy, 265, at fullback this year, George. Yeah, I was speaking with Mike Baldy, the wrestling coach at North, right before the ball game. He was kind of happy to see Paul out there for football, even though he is a, a state-caliber wrestler. And he said the kid is enjoying it, and hopefully he will improve quick enough to, to be an asset to the ball club. Never played football until this year, right? That's right. That's correct. I think he lost in the quarterfinals or the semifinals of the state wrestling tournament last year at Princeton. We, we have a timeout north with 4.10 to go in the first quarter, 7 to nothing Mariners. Uh, Bob, I was going to touch on Lou's terminology. When he gives me the starting lineup, he always confuses me over the phone because he gives me his front five, but yet he calls his uh, left end and right end linebackers because I guess they drop off a lot. And he, he has a flip-flop system with his strong side and his yeah. weak side. What he, he also does that on his linebackers. What he's doing most likely is he's taking his defensive end and playing him tough or as a defensive end when a tight end is there. Want to have split receivers to that side, he's probably flip-flopping and using somebody else to drop off as a linebacker to that side. So he's taking advantage of the strengths of his kids and playing against the strength of the offense. What uh, we talked about it earlier, what he's hoping to do is just run Scott Hebrew and Dave Egan on offense today. But if he really, if it gets tough, he's going to bring them in. Hebrew would come in at nose guard. He goes 240, and Egan goes 250. He would come in at defensive tackle side by side. There is two veteran linemen, Ken, but he'd like to play a lot of kids because he feels he's got to play a lot of bodies to build for this year. 
All right, Lacey drops back Gordy and uh, Cameron. The snap is rolled to the punter, but he got it off. No rush. Gordy drops it, picks it up. Trying to come wide from the 43-yard line. He does. He turns the corner. Here goes Garrett Gordy. And the punter finally knocks him out of bounds. Doug Dawkins, the punter, finally stopped Gordy. Unusual to see a quarterback back on punts, but the kid has ability. He's an athlete, and uh, nice job there. He's knocked out at the 23-yard line. It went from the 43 to the 23, Bob. Uh, yes, it did. It was about a 35-yard return by Gordy. You know, Ken Gordy last year was a very underrated quarterback. Elias got the headlines, but Gordy played as a very, very, very heady ball player. He's a real leader. He's a coach's son. Very cool under pressure. Lacey trailing 7-0, trying to get on the board here. Here goes Elias and the pitch from Gordy. Why? He turns a corner. There's a speed. Touchdown. Twenty-three yard run for Keith Elias. He made it look easy, George. Yeah, he's on the corner again. And like I said, once he gets on the corner, the uh, linebackers for Tom's River North can't compete with his speed, and they're inside out, and they can't get to him. So Keith Elias, who averaged uh, just under eight yards a carry last year as a junior, uh, on his first carry there goes 23 yards for the touchdown. The extra point attempt, and uh, Brian Coffey, that we saw at fullback, a little while ago, and he's got it. <laughs> and kick stopped dead in the wind, George. What his holder you? is Garrett Gardy, and the long snap man is left guard Mike Peterson. So we got a tie ball game here, seven to seven, late in the first quarter of play. Three forty-three left to go. Two touchdowns. Both came on only one play drives. <laughs> the fourteen-yard run by. Uh, Florino and the 23-yard run by Elias. Of course, Elias had some help on a 35-yard punt return by Gordy. Uh, Guys, I wanted to ask you, do we have any ru big rule changes this year? We didn't touch on that on the pregame show, George. Not that I know of, Ken. So everything's basically the same as last year, then. How about the playoff system? Is that going to work the same way, guys, this year? They're talking about a change in that, I believe, and it's under uh, discussion right now. There's been a lot of controversy over it and uh, changing it and going to sectional playoffs as well as other teams going for an overall championship. They want to eliminate some Thanksgiving Day games and I think that's going to be the drawback. I hate to see football lose the rivalry to Thanksgiving Day games, George. To me, it, that's what makes football, the rivalries. And to lose it for playoffs, to me, is just very disappointing. Brian Coffey goes short. And out of bounds, I have to do it over again unless the Mariners want good field position. What's the rule in high school? Do they have to kick it over, guys, or is it option of the uh, receiving team? It's a five-yard penalty, penalty, and they have to kick it over. Oh, well, they could get it on a 40. There it is. There it is. They I decline. thought so. So much for that. They can decline it and take it on a 40. They declined it. It's a penalty. I right? know I saw that on a college game last week. A friend of mine was watching the game and was surprised that they could just take the ball. He thought they had to kick it over right again. Right where it went out of bounds. You can put it where it goes out of bounds because they placed the ball where it went out of bounds. So the Mariners want that field position at the 38. So that's what they're going to get. Dawkins brings them up in the I formation. Clarino is the tailback. They go to Clor uh, Joe Clarino. And Joe Clarino's got a first down. He takes it across midfield at Lacey 49. Yeah, North is coming off the ball real nice. Uh, Mike Jump has got them moving real well. Nice counter that time. Clarino ripped up in there and he almost broke another long play. First down play for North. They give to the fullback. Brian Armbruster, was it? Or was it Rich? I think it was Armbruster. 41, 41 is Brian Armbruster, 5'9", 170. You can tell the difference between the two fullbacks. Armbruster doesn't quite measure up to Paul Rich, 6'2", 265, 5'9", 170. A little bit of a difference. I'll tell you, though, Ken, I, when he hit that line, I heard the pop from up here. That kid runs hard. I was going to say that, you know. Well, when I said he doesn't measure up, I didn't mean running ability. I meant in size, 
just pounds. Second down, seven. Go get him! Clarino, Clarino getting some nice holes off the right side on Apostolakis side, Ed Sasset, a two big, uh, 260 pounds, 245 pounds blocking. A little bit of counteraction that time, Ford Lacey. That's the same play they opened the drive with, George. Picked up 13 yards first time, 10 yards this time. There you see the Lacey bench. If your picture looks dark, folks, it's because it is dark. It's very, we had a beautiful morning here <laughs> in uh, Lanoka Harbor and Fork and River, but got near kickoff time. It sure did get cloud covered. Clarino bullying his way. And sure, the first down. Scott Hebrew in there. I said uh, Coach uh, Brasillo wanted to platoon, but he's got the big guys in there on defense. George, do you know if uh, North has run any option? Because that time, it was like an old belly series. Fake the first back gave to the second back through. You, do you think they'd keep the, take the quarterback and have him uh, ride it outside and run an option off well, of it? They're running at Delaware. You know, fake the dive, give to the, off ta give to the back off tackle. Pitch to the tailback. This time it's not Clarino. That time it was Keith Keenan. Looked like a crackback block to me, Ken. Yeah. On the st stop for the Lacey Lions was Mike Potichar, defensive strong side in. An illegal crackback block, George, by the outside receiver coming back in on Lacey. And uh, play went for no gain as it is, but it's going to cost them 15 yards. And I know the coaches, when we work on plays like that, we tell the kids if the man's back is turned, don't hit him, wait he turns around, and invariably they don't listen. Big penalty against the Mariners. Right? Clipping. you got to go a little deeper. Bring it back 15 yards. There you see some of the Lacey fans here today. It's going to make it second in about 21, Ken. They push the ball back to the uh, Lacey 47-yard line. And this is the kind of a situation that North wants to stay away from. It's had a little sprinkle of rain, but it hasn't let loose, and we're hoping it's going to hold off till we get the ball game in this afternoon. Second down play for the Mariners. Long yardage. Dawkins straight back to the near side. Complete to Keith Keenan, loose ball, Lacey has it. Ron Laird, linebacker on the football, number 47. That was well done, well executed, nice timing, a good throw. Unfortunately for North, and fortunately for Lacey, it ends up in a fumble. It was an excellent first down pattern, just a simply kind of pro first down pattern with two of the receivers running the hook and one of them running it out. It was completed, executed perfectly, but the ball popped loose. Yeah, that's a John Hunty special. I mean, that's the way he used to do it when he coached for Bob Fiaco. Clock running, 25 seconds up, left in the period. Lacey going to get off one play here from their own 30-yard line to start this series. Now North's going to stop the clock. Timeout, Mariners. Okay, maybe North figures they can use their timeouts, and if they stop Lacey, Lacey will have to punt into the win. But just, with 17 seconds, I don't know. You just saw a shot of the Lacey Lion mascot. They had a real line here at one time, and uh, they brought him in from the Popcorn Park Zoo. The name of the line was Lacey, but Lacey got a little rambunctious when uh, the crowd got around the cage. So that, eat was, somebody. that was the end of that experiment <laughs> and now we have a mascot one of the students here at Lacey there you see Bob Nanny in his first year wearing the uh, shorts uh, on the left of your screen there talking to his squad there you see the Lacey cheerleaders as um, we start this new season any surprises in Friday night games guys other than the I wouldn't well, say uh, the Brick Middletown. South we heard game Central was going to be good, so I wouldn't say it's a surprise they look good. It's the fact that they it's a surprise beat a they good shut team out as, as bad as they did. Second, yeah, sure. But the the rest of it went pretty smooth. Uh, Marlboro beat Free Old Township seven nothing. Middletown South beat Brick six two. Everybody picks Middletown South to be number one in the shore. Neptune beat Brick Memorial twenty one seven. That wasn't a surprise. Here's Elias. 
And that time he picked up a yard or two carrying Mike Strauss on his back. He's showing a little power, George. Yeah, Joe Clarino is out of the ball game. He's limping on the sidelines, and he's not only a running back, but he's a middle linebacker. Southern dominated Monsignor Donovan. Uh, we understand Southern is like a dark horse. A lot of people think they might win it all, George. Well, I, I, you know, I heard some bad things about their scrimmage against Brick Memorial. I heard Brick Memorial handled them and won it 13 0. Uh, I guess 21 7, Neptune Brick Memorial was not a surprise, but I think it's an effort that the Brick Memorial coaches were looking for. At least it wasn't a blowout. We have the end of the first quarter with a score. Tom's over North 7, Lacey 7. We'll be back with a second quarter after these messages. Do you want to make your evenings count? Why not explore the activities provided by Ocean County College, your community college? The Ocean County College Community Education Department offers 90 credit-free courses per semester for personal and professional growth at all ages. The Robert J. Novins Planetarium and the Ocean County College Fine Arts Theater offer many evenings of exciting, enjoyable performances for young and old. Credit courses are available on the main campus as well as seven extension centers throughout the county. Remember that the future belongs to the educated, and Ocean County College is a place where happy endings begin. Young people from all walks of life have volunteered to take part in a frightening experiment. Next. For a short time each day, they are allowing their brains to be altered. Altered to the degree that paranoia has been induced. Altered to cause loss of motor functions. Altered to have adverse effects on reproductive organs. Altered to produce heart malfunction and destruction of brain cells to the point of memory loss and acceleration of the aging process. The most frightening part of this experiment is that it is not an experiment. It's what slowly happens to you when you keep smoking pot. No one has to alter your brain. You've already volunteered to do it to yourself. McGruff here with Regina to sing Users Are Losers. We are back at the start of the second quarter. <laughs> Lacey Lyons up over the ball. Guardy pitches to Elias. He's going to throw it. Option pass. You remember last year in the state game, that was a big play for Lacey. Keith Elias option pass. It set up the, the, the score at the end of the game. All right, I'm, I had to take a side trip, talk to one of our production people, and here I am back. Um, right now, Again, I want to make reference. We're having a little breakup of our picture. It's not really our fault. We have a power problem in a press box. We apologize for the annoyance that may be causing you trying to watch the picture, trying to resolve it. Here's Gordy to the air. Yeah. Bennett check. Puts on a move, but he can't go anywhere. Covering for Times River North was number 20 number 32 keith keenan who plays both ways for the mariners first down lacy they have the ball at their own 40 41 yard line it's a it's a balanced defense 4-4 four, four that north is using and lacy ran a bit of a flood pattern there and put three receivers in the same area and spread them out it looked george like they deliberately tried to complete the pass and use the other receiver to pick for him but it came back and he ran back inside the other receiver to block for him which enabled him to get the first down split backfield for the lines guardy straight back Steps up the pocket, he's gonna run. Gordy's showing great quickness. Another first down for Lacey inside the 40 yard line of North. And I'll tell you, Gordy is really showing him some explosiveness on his running, George. Yeah, he's an athlete, Ken. You know, anytime you let him loose, he's gonna make yardage. 
Another first down for Lacey. They're on the march here during the second quarter. We have a tie ball game, 7-7. Seven seven. North scored first after recovering a Keith Elias fumble on the Lacey 20. They went into one play, Joe Clarino covering the 20 yards on the ground. And then Lacey got the ball back, and Elias went in one play, 23 yards for a touchdown. Here's Elias, flag on a play. Two flags. Yeah, I think we have an offsides and we have a clip. Again, it's Lacey. Gordy picked up over 30 yards on that little scamper. But we said that he was a player that was very underrated last year. Uh, lost as a sophomore in the shadows of the seniors like Terracone and Elias and Farul and Deptula. And uh, Gordy figures to be maybe one of the better quarterbacks in the shore this year. Coming back against Lacey. Legal procedure, Ken. It was motion before the snap. Next week, we'll have Southern Regional hosting Central Regional, and both teams will be going in 1-0. and we'll, Our playbacks this year on Channel 8, Sunday night at 5.30 p.m., Thursday night at 6 p.m. Hope you'll be with us throughout the season. All right, the Lacey Lions now have the football at the North 44-yard line. Elias, the lone setback, slot formation to the right, quarterback sneak. And Gordy gets a first down behind. Now he's short of a first down. Look at the wrong mark. He's up to the 35-yard um, line. And the guy doing the blocking was number 75, Chris Campo. I'm sure the center was involved in that, too. Bullets. Gordy picked up well, about 10 I, yards. I, I'm wondering if that was an automatic for the quarterback to do any time they go into what we call a six wide where the linebackers move out over the tackles. Second and five for Lacey. Elias, very close to the first down marker. Looks like it's just Brian short. Brian Rayhill on a stop, outside linebacker. Just short, Ken, half a foot, I'd say. Guardy almost got tackled before he handed off. One of the Mariners penetrated quickly. Third and... Very short yard for uh, the Lions. Second quarter, all tied up. 7-7, non-conference game. B Division South, Lacey against A Division South, Toms River North. Well, Clarino just came back into the ball game for Arm Brewster. Trick, trick! That middle linebacker. Again, the, the uh, twin wideouts to the far side, split backfield. Guardy again sneaks. He's got, He's got it. Down to about the 25-yard line. Good call there. The Mariners have gone to an even defense. They have nobody playing head on the center. Gordy just tapped the center and went straight ahead on it. Come on, Garrett. I look for Lacey to try to go outside again where they've had great success. Well, it seems, George, that they can get outside almost any time they want. Elias has got the speed to turn that corner. Elias, tripped up by Mike Strauss, first one to hit him, and then he had some help. Also in there for Times Over North, Steve Kurz, a 6'1", 190 senior defensive end, and no gain on the play. Diedelmeyer, we mentioned defensive tackle for North. He had a brother who was quite a football player. He was also a good boxer. I think it was Bob Diedelmeyer. Yep. And uh, he was doing uh, quite a, a lot of boxing, uh, went golden gloves, I guess, at first, and uh, lost track of him. I don't know if he ever turned pro. Gordy, complete. That's down near the 12-yard uh, line. Uh, Ron Laird, the tight end. And uh, again, close to a first down. Let's see if they got it. Yes, first down, Lacey on the move here. 8.26 to play in a half. They marked the ball at the 13-yard line. Lions trying to take the lead for the first time today. Slot formation to the right. Elias dives forward. Clarino hit him, and uh, 
he just kept his feet moving and uh, while he was going down, he reached out, get as much yardage as he could. Officials time out. Little draw play that time. But instead really of a loss, yeah, instead of a loss, Bob, he got a couple yards. Yeah, he got hit about three yards deep in the backfield as he set up for the draw, and he still managed to gain a yard. Just saw Joe Corino, a tough football player for Ch uh, North. He impressed the slasher. There he is, 44, getting his helmet fixed. A little problem with a chin strap. Now he's ready to go. Clarino calls those defensive signals. Who's the de uh, defensive coordinator this year for North, guys? Oh, let's see here. Can we have it down? They revised the staff this year. Is it? Well, uh, they, they've got a, they've got the three coaches uh, involved in the defense. No one's really earmarked as a defensive coordinator. I'll ask you to run their staff down when we get a chance. Bootleg. Guardy gets outside. Still on his feet. Touchdown. Yeah. Managed to get outside again on the corner. A couple of nice moves by Garrett. 13-yard run by Garrett Gardy. And he was hit by uh, Times of the North number 64, Jeff Bell. But yet he kept his balance and managed to just get inside that marker in the corner of the end zone. Nice bounce by Garrett Gardy. Lacey goes into the lead. And now they'll try the extra point with Brian Coffey doing the kicking. Low snap on the ground. Coffey picks it up. Coffey runs into his own man and he will not get in. Score remains Lacey 13, Tom's River North 7, 727 left in the first half. Okay, that was a 12-play drive, taking the first four and a half minutes of this second quarter. Lacey going right up the field, very impressively, and uh, scoring a touchdown to take a 13-7 lead. So Lacey was a, a large, kind of revamped offensive line, but yet handling the size of Toms over North with an impressive drive for the go-ahead touchdown. So the Lacey staff doing a nice job of uh, make, putting replacements in here for uh, kids that went off that state championship team and graduated. I'll tell you what's been interesting. Everybody came here expecting to see this be the Keith Elias show. Elias took the opening kickoff for that TD, which was called back. And ever since then, it's been the Garrett Gordy show. You have Ron Laird, big shoes to fill, moving over to tight end this year with uh, Tara Cone at Rutgers. And you've got a sophomore on the left side, Chris Campo, 268-pounder. And you've got a new center, Keith Bullets, a sophomore. So... Lacey blending in some sophomores on this year's team, and it looked pretty good there as they had that touchdown drive. Here's Coffee to kick off, end over end. 12-yard line, and here comes the return for North and up to about the 30-yard line. Nice return. Was that 48, guys? Yes, yes. That was Rob Brown, the uh, right cornerback on defense, returning the kickoff for the Mariners. Nice run. Got out to about the 31-yard line, showing some good power. So the Lacey defense is going to try to hold the lead here now, going at halftime up by a touchdown. Calling the signals is Laird, the linebacker on the weak side. Mariners send a receiver to the near side. Chet Wigolinski, the tight end, is to the near side. Give to the tailback. Lacey shuts it down, gain of maybe one or two. On a stop for the lines, we got uh, number 64 in there for Lacey, and that's Bill Bolger who made the stop. Got two, second and eight for the Mariners. Nanny continues to shuffle those reserves, and we see big Paul Rich coming back in, a 265-pound fullback. He lines up next to Clarino in a split backfield. Second down play for North. Quick look in, almost picked off. Laird almost got a shot at that as one of the defensive linemen for Lacey got a hand on it. Thank you. And that was a weird formation. Uh, Go ahead, Bob. I, Go ahead. I was just going to say, I thought it was number 71 for the Lions that got his hands up and deflected the ball. You know, North was in a, a, a formation where they had two tight ends on the same side and tried to fool Lacey by putting a flanker on this side.
We got a familiar name in there, uh, Bob, I'll mention in a moment for Lacey on defense we haven't talked about, young sophomore. Florina stopped cold by, I believe it was 64, guys, Bolger Billy again. Bolger. Yeah, Billy Bill Bolger we haven't mentioned. It's He's a, a senior, 5'10", 210. I wanted to mention Kill Murray, who's in that secondary. He was um, quite a player in the younger teams. He's a sophomore now. He's a quarterback, so, of course, he's backing up Garrett Gordy, but he's starting. And, of course, John Kill Murray, uh, the great one at Central, uh, was on the staff here up until this year. Took a year off this year. This is his nephew, Mike uh, Kill Murray. Um, <clears throat> this is the fourth down punt. They Good snap. Punt into the stiff wind. Gordy. Gordy's going to back away. And it's covered by Toms over north. And Lacey's going to come out of that with excellent field position with five minutes and 16 seconds to go before the half. They have enough time to, to drive another one in. Mike Carney on the coverage for the uh, special teams. There you see Mike, number 59, first one down for the Mariners. Corny's a versatile player. He's a center. He also does the long snaps. He covers on the kicks. Nice man to have on your football team. Usually, uh, the center knows the ball is gone. He's off on the punt. Well, the wind continues to swirl here at Lacey High, and uh, the skies continue to look gray everywhere we look, so I don't think we're going to see the sun the rest of the day. Here's Elias. Elias up to the 40-yard line, maybe the 42. The market will compromise. They'll put it to 41. It's going to be a gain of four, second and six for Lacey. How would you care, compare Keith Elias to Pete Panuska, Bob? Uh, I think grade. Pete had a little bit more foot speed in terms of uh, it was a little quicker. Uh, Elias... Uh, I think he's got just a little bit more power inside than he, he had. But they're both similar type runners. Elias cuts it outside. Look at that run. Look at that run. Looked like he was nailed, guys, and he somehow he picked up another four yards. Yeah. What a move. It's one thing about him that I noticed last year and so far this year. He never goes backwards. He always manages to go for that extra inch, whether he puts the ball out or whether he, he's always falling forward. He keeps his shoulders square with the goal post, and he runs north and south. He should uh, have a first down here at the 48, but I think they're going to measure. Time out to measure. You know, you know, he he finished second in the state in scoring last year, but we forget he missed that championship game with Central Regional when he only played the first half. He scored in that game, and then with that rib injury, they pulled him out the second half. And, of course, Central went on to pull the game out. And Kenny was also only 49 yards away from being the Shores' leading rusher. Had he played that last game and come anywhere near his previous performances, he would have finished as the number one scorer in the state plus the number one ground gainer in the Shore. But you know what he's doing so far this year that he did not do as much of last year? He's making great cuts. He's, he's showing a little more shiftiness as a runner than he did last year. Vision. Great vision, yeah. My halftime guest will be Lynn Lloyd, the assistant football coach at Tom's River South. And the Indians got off to a good start last night. We'll talk about that at halftime. Take a look at the Indians. Here's Elias. He's got a lot of room. Flag in the secondary. Holding. Um, no air. Elias had the first down, but I think it's going to come back. Let's see what the call is. Sure that I think it's holding on 77. Flags right on a 45-yard line of north. Official singling, signaling holding. Number 77. He was holding on in the middle of the field. 350 left in the half. 13-7 is a score, folks, if you're just tuning in. In favor of Lacey, north led early. 7 to nothing. Lacey's come back. 13-7 in the lead. And you know coaches holding penalties like that coach, it drives coaches nuts because that play, the hold was at least 25 yards away from where the play was. Right. No reason for it. Holding is the call. You're right, guys. So the ball is marched back to the Lacey 45. So it makes it second in a bundle, second and 25. Garrett Gordy, of course, an all-around athlete. He also plays basketball, the quarterback of Lacey. He's the uh, quarterback of the basketball team. He runs the offense for... John McIntosh. A lot of poise last year as a sophomore. He's going, He's for going long, open! Oh, just incomplete. 
He had a little heat on him, Ken. That's, he had to get rid of the ball real quick, sooner than he wanted to. Schoenberg, Charlie Schoenberg, who alternates at wide receiver for Lacey, the intended receiver. You know, uh, the thing that impressed me last year was Gardy didn't have a pass interception going into that last game against Central. I believe he did get intercepted in that ball game, but that's quite a stat for a sophomore. Well, that's what I meant, Ken, when I said he was a very heady quarterback. Uh, being a coach's son, he grows up watching that TV set, hearing his father second-guess everybody and <laughs> coaching the games there, and he learned a lot. And he's a very heady kid. He'll take the sack or he'll tuck it in and run rather than throwing interceptions. Gardy straight back, getting the blocking, incomplete. He threw a little too low to Ron Laird at mid, right around the midfield stripe. Credit and those last two incompletions to the Toms River North defense. Right. Gardy's just not getting the time to set up. The receivers are breaking open, but he's had no time to set his feet. He's throwing the ball a little earlier than he wants to. Right, that was Brian Armbruster again. Twice in a row he was on his back. Clock stop, 321 left in the half. Tom's River North band across the way on the drums right now, getting behind her team, the Mariner marching band. Lacey band is left to get ready for the halftime show. They were sitting right in front of us. Third down play for Garrett. Looks like he set up a screen. Threw it away. But he Mark. threw it away, and the rush was really on, but Might move. couldn't Ma get enough time to set the screen the up Mariners, to the near side. Mariners blitzed both inside linebackers that time, Ken, and Garrett just never got a chance to set up at all. A little surprised that Lacey came out 315 left there after the penalty threw three straight downs. I would have thought that the way Elias has been running, they'd mind to try to get outside a little bit. I think they had the win, and they probably wanted to take advantage of it if there's any reason at all, Bob. Yeah, if he hits that first pass in that post pattern, which we felt was open early in the game, that's a score. Yeah, we got number 84 for Lacey going to drop back the punt, and that is Dan Hope, who I was not told was going to kick today, so this is a surprise to me. Let's see what Hope does. Oh. High snap. And North covers the snap. Lacey had a little problem on the center snap here, and North gets a big break here late in the first half, 3.06. They've got enough time, George, to maybe get a score here. Yeah, the only thing working against them is the wind, but they're really not going to throw the football anyway. Here's where I get into second guessing, and I should fight my tongue. <laughs> We'll have our player of the game award on the post game show if we're not, if the rain does not let loose. And uh, we'll hope you stay tuned for our most outstanding player of the ball game coming up immediately after the ball game. That time to hand off to Arm Brewster and he's stacked up. Lacey defense right there to meet him. Gain of about a yard, second and nine. Bob Nanny, of course, I uh, he went to Toms River North, didn't he, as a student? I know he went to Admiral Farragut. Yeah, he was a Farragut graduate. That I did know, he go all the way through Farragut, North. or was he a student in the Toms River school system? I don't know about North, but he did go to Farragut. I know of that. Of course, he's Farragut. been in Toms River system for a long time. Coach wrestling as well as football. Interception! Interception! The race is on! Alignment dream. Tackle Rob Jacobson on the interception all the way down to the four yard line. Hey, I'll tell you what, he Florida really got him on the four. But he picked that off somewhere around a 30, I think. He can ramble for a 200 pounder. <laughs> call that around a 30, George? Yeah, absolutely. On a 27 yard line. 27? And he takes it all the way down to the four. You want to get the distance on that one, Bob? I'm working, I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> Jacobson, the big tackle, turned on the speed and uh, sprinting down the field. He's going to be tired now. Tackles don't usually have to run more than five or ten yards on those running plays. Forty is the most that they practice running. How quick things change. So there's the quick turnaround. We have a minute and 41 seconds to go and a half. And Coach Versilla goes out to talk to his offensive unit with a timeout here. 
I think that was Clarino on a stop. Clarino caught him from the back. Yeah. Probably the only guy left who could have caught him. That's a 68-yard return <laughs> on the interception by a tackle. How run. would you like to be Jacobson? Goes 66 yards. Those tackles don't get a chance to touch that football that often. Jacobson will be reliving that one about 10 times in his sleep tonight. You know, we got two Jacobsons on the squad. There's another Jacobson uh, that uh, is on the roster. So that name may be big this year for the Lacey Lions as we go through the season. 141 left to go in the half here. The Lions have enough time for about three plays. It's going to be interesting to see how they elect to put it in, whether they're trying to do it running down this close or try to do a little play action pass, maybe. We got an Eric Jacobson listed as the backup to Ron Lair to tight end. He's a sophomore. That may be a brother act, guys. All right, here comes Lacey. First and goal at the four yard line. <laughs> Elias going right. Elias touchdown. Elias kind of coasted in. Nobody Outside. really had a shot yep. at him. They had three receivers to the right side. Absolutely. And then Elias just Absolutely. All used they them did, as, All they did was get up and shield the defender in front of them, and he just found the air. He almost used them like cones on a driving course where you go to take your driving test. Elias is about three steps faster than anybody else out on his field. And when he gets to that outside, as soon as he clears the end, if he's got a step on him, he owns the corner. He can turn that corner anytime he wants. So it's a four-yard touchdown run, but credit uh, the tackle, Jacobson, for the how many yards? 60? 60, 68 yards. 68-yard return of the interception to set that one up. So um, Rob Jacobson, a 5'11", 240-pound senior tackle, the player of that drive. And, and then Elias capped it off. All next week, he's going to be telling Coach Rosillo he wants to play fullback after that. <laughs> well, Paul Rich can play fullback for North at 265. I don't know why Jacobson couldn't play a little fullback. But I think uh, Lou likes having his size up front. Well, don't let the coach should tell him, don't forget the wind was helping you down the field. <laughs> <laughs> the last 10 yards looked like he needed it. <laughs> No, Ken is Bob Natty on the screen. He, he's uh, been an assistant coach at North for 10 years under five different head coaches. He's and, been a uh, dedicated uh, part of the North coaching staff, that's for sure. And you know, Ken, we had four new coaches this year in the Shore area, in our broadcast area. Uh, Bob Nanny at Toms River North, Bill Bruno at Pinelands, Nick Aramida at uh, Lakewood, Aramida, and uh, Brick Memorial, Jim Calabro. Uh, good luck to all of those new coaches, and we'll probably be catching most of them on our broadcast this year. Well, Pinelands won last night over Homedale, up at Homedale. And uh, Calabro, a brick assistant for many years, a warm wolf. Garrett Gardy. Two points. 21 to 7, Lacey. So Lacey Speed starting to take control of this football game. As we saw that Lacey Speed last year uh, on this field in that state championship game we did on Channel 8 against a quick team like Woodrow Wilson, but yet Lacey dominating with Elias. Well, of our scores, that's the third one that came in only one play. We had only one drive all game, Lacey's big drive. All the rest of the scores came in only one play. Somebody up in our booth was comparing uh, Gardy on that run to a former all Shore quarterback who played for John Gardy up at Central, Jeff Musselman. That rollout type of quarterback, but I think Gardy may be a little quicker than Musselman. Musselman, of course, the Major League Baseball pitcher now with the New York Mets. And Jeff had a fine season with the Mets, did some fine middle relief for them. And uh, we continue to wish him luck. I think Musselman may have been a, a little bit better of a pure passer, but I think Gardy has a lot more ability to get to that corner quicker in this kick. That goes into the end zone and out. No return. That one got up into the wind and just sailed. It just kept on going. 135 left to play in the half. And I hope I can still find Lynn Lloyd for our halftime interview and uh, find out what's going on with the Indians rebuilding a little bit this year. But Chip doesn't really rebuild. Uh, the old saying he reloads is kind of appropriate <laughs> up at Toms River South. He lost Vinnie Muse, who's down at Farragut. He 
He lost his son, Chip LaBarca, now at Penn State. He lost Madalena. his skill position players, Madalena, who's linebacking down at Farragut. It still won 13-12 over Middletown North last night, and I understand used a freshman back who was very impressive. Well, here comes Clarino. Clarino powers his way. Short of the 30-yard line, mark around a 28. And it'll bring up second. Gain of about seven, second and three. Clock running, nearing the one-minute mark left in the first half. Long count. Florino, first down, across the 30 to about the 34-yard line for Tom's over north. Bob's going to recap the scoring plays before we break at halftime, then I'll get down to the field for the halftime interview. Clock uh, running now, under a minute to play. So Lacey, if north doesn't break one here, looks like they'll go in with a Two touchdown lead here at halftime of the opening ball game of the 1989 season. Here, our first game of the week on Channel 8. Florino. Ron Laird on a stop for the Lions. Got about a yard or two. Looks like North is just going to run the clock out, Ken, with their, the wind in their face. I, I guess I when you get intercepted, smart. you take takes the wind out of you a little bit. You want to regroup. At 21-7, if they come out in the second half and score, they're right back in the ball game. If they gave up another score now and went in 28-7, the ball game's over. Seven seconds. Let's see if they get this playoff. Five seconds. Gonna have to hurry. No. That's it. The end of the half with a score. The Lacey Lions, the home team, 21. The visiting Toms River High School North Mariners, seven. Bob? All right, Ken, at 9.41 in the first quarter, Jimmy uh, Florino scored from 14 yards out to make it 6 nothing for the Mariners, who recovered a fumble deep in Lions territory to set up that score. Later on, uh, Garrett Gardy returned a punt 35 yards to the 23-yard line, where Keith Elias on first down uh, took the ball 23 yards at 3.43 in that first quarter to score to make it 7-6. Brian Coffey made the extra point to make it 7-7. Seven, seven. Then in the second quarter, Lacey Lions mounted a 12-play drive, taking four and a half minutes, and it was Gardy running 13 yards on a rollout to make it 13-7. The extra point was no good. It stayed at 13-7 until 135 in the uh, second quarter after Ron Jacobson intercepted a pass and returned it to the four-yard line, returned it 68 yards to the four-yard line, and uh, from there, Keith Elias took it four yards to the touchdown to make it 19-7. Garrett Gardy made the two-point conversion to make it 21-7, which brings us where we are now. Good job, Bobby. Uh, Ken will be up with our halftime guest, Lynn Lloyd from Toms River South, an assistant coach, in a moment. Yo, Al's here. Apparently some chowder heads out there aren't taking care of this planet. They're messing up public lands. They're littering the beaches and vandalizing the parks. Look, folks, public lands are not like pizzas. You just can't pick up the phone and order more. So let's take care of our land. Let's save the planet. Call me and promise you'll help. I'll send you a bunch of neat stuff. It's my way of saying thanks. It's an acknowledgement of your concern. It's a bribe. Young people from all walks of life have volunteered to take part in a frightening experiment. Next. For a short time each day, they are allowing their brains to be altered. Altered to the degree that paranoia has been induced. Altered to cause loss of motor functions. Altered to have adverse effects on reproductive organs. Altered to produce heart malfunction and destruction of brain cells to the point of memory loss and acceleration of the aging process. The most frightening part of this experiment is that it is not an experiment. It's what slowly happens to you when you keep smoking pot. 
No one has to alter your brain. You've already volunteered to do it to yourself. This blue represents pride and determination. The red, the courage and sacrifice shown by those few who knew what it was.